Wonderful. Tonight, um, I've got a, a, a really awesome message. I, it's called uh, How to Live Out of the Mind of Christ. Um, it's going to be really, really awesome. Um, I, I want to share my screen, Ruben. Am I good? So, so. This is the, it is called how to live out of the mind of Christ. And uh, this is part one of it. And um, it is really interesting because we are more than what we come to know or come to believe that we are. We are special people. And um, I really trust that this is going to enable us. Uh, last week, Ruben spoke on how, you know, how to uh, uh, how we can please our dad through prayer and fasting. Our life is a life that pleases him. And then um, it also comes down to knowing how that is possible. And that is where this message tonight is uh, it's really very, very important to each and every one of us. So let me first look at the dominance of our mind. You know, we are we're going to live from the mind of Christ, but the scripture had this to say to us in uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. It says that as he thinks in his heart, or as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That first part of this uh, scripture is really, really telling. It says, as he thinks in his heart, old King James will say, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. <laughs> I thought that is really interesting. And um, he's telling us that our thinking actually dominates our lives. You cannot separate what you think or your thinking with who you are or what you do. It is very, very important. Another scripture is in Romans chapter 14, verse 14. And this is really, really important because here is Paul talking. He started by saying, I know and I am convinced by personal revelation from the Lord Jesus that there is nothing wrong with eating any food. But to the one who considers it to be unclean, then it is unacceptable. He said, I know and I'm convinced by the Lord himself that no food is unclean. But if someone thinks that food is unclean, then it becomes unclean to him. You see how dominant our minds can be. You see how so much what we think most of the time com comes in contrast or comes to contradict what God is saying to us. So are we living on what God says or are we living from what we are thinking? If our mind is dominating, if a lot that goes through our mind, you know, is countering the truth of what God is saying, we will have problem. We will have such an unstable walk, unstable living. Our lives will be like a roller coaster. You know, we will be up and down because something is countering. There is something that is hindering. So the mind can be really dominant. And if we have a dominant mind, that is not conformed or transformed, we are a problem. It would be like something is sabotaging 
the truth or the gospel or the word that we are receiving. If you remember the parable of the sower, one of the sin, uh, one of the uh, sin there was when the good seed fell on on the ground, but it started to grow. It really germinated. It, it sprout, and uh, but there are thorns there. There are thorns that choked the word and killed the word, and it becomes unprofitable. And Jesus said, these are like, you know, when someone receives the word of God, he said, but because of uh, chaos of this life and the deceitfulness of riches, these things choke the word, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. They dies. So uh, if, if our mind, if we carry an unregenerated mind, if we carry uh, 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 some minds that are self-defeating, it can be an obstacle from really progressing in the things of the spirit. But I want to thank God that we have these awesome opportunities to once again look into where we are and what we are doing and uh, find out those things that are actually robbing us from being all that we've been created to be. Another scripture is in, in the book of Titus, Epistle of Titus. It says, uh, to the unclean in heart, all things are unclean. Sorry, to the clean, to the clean in heart, all things are clean. But to those who are unclean and without faith, Nothing is clean. They, they become unclean in mind and in their thoughts. Can you imagine? So if to the clean in heart, everything is clean. But to those who are unclean and without faith, nothing is clean. So you, you, you can see where the problem lies. Why? Am I not making progress? Even though I hear such an awesome word, I hear such an awesome encouragement. I've had a prophetic word over and over. And uh, whenever God says, say, yeah, mm, I just shake my head and say, yeah, all right, another, here we go again, another word, you know. And um, you, you, you begin to see that there's something that is sabotaging, that is nullifying what God is bringing into our lives. But as believers, we are called to have the mind of Christ. Amen. Okay? This is who we are. Second, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says, For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he should instruct him? And then he said, But you, or but we, have the mind of Christ. We have mind of Christ. Every believer, we have. Okay, we do have it. Here is another translation from the Passion uh, uh, test, um, translation. It says, for who has ever intimately known the mind of the Lord, Yahweh, well enough to become his counselor? He said, Christ has and we possesses Christ's perception. Every believer, we have Christ's mind. We have his perception. Is this true of your experience? Can you say, I have the mind of Christ? It's not just something we say casually, but it's something that we say because we know that we are. Okay, let's keep going. It's going to get interesting as we go on. In uh, Philippians chapter five, uh, chapter 2, verse 5, it says to us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. So which mind do I have? Which mind do you have? The mind of Christ. His mind is my mind. I have the mind of Christ. And if I have the mind of Christ, I live out my life from the mind of Christ. 
living from that place becomes my whole being. It's not, it is not a thing that uh, switch on, you know, religion. You got to do some certain thing to really wind yourself to, to, in order to switch on. And then you switch on and you switch off. You switch on and you switch off. And that's why, you know, when we say to people, when you read the Romans chapter 6, verse 10, where it says, put on the whole armor of God. Now, we ask you, when did you put, if you have put it on, which I believe is what happened when we received Jesus into our lives as our Lord and Savior, something happened. Now, we keep asking people, if you are putting him on every day, when did you put him off? And a lot of people stop to think because they never thought that that, you know, they thought it's just emotion, something that um, you wear like clothes. You know, you put on your clothes, you put it off. You put on. No, 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 no. Christ is constant. And because he's constant in our life, he guides and regulates our lives. Everything we are flows from that relationship flows from that intimacy so we put on the mind of christ and um, here is another translation of uh, that uh, philippians chapter 5 he said and think the same way that christ jesus thought the only way we can think the same way is because we have his mind what you and i have is his mind okay and then um, this is very, very interesting. Now, Christ lives in me. Christ lives in you. Look at this powerful scripture in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And that which I now live in the flesh, I live in the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Can I hear you say, say it loud, Christ lives in me. Amen. You know, say it loud to you. Just scream it in your room. Shout it there. Christ lives in me. Because that is the point. That is the point if christ is in you then something has happened to you you don't have to make any allegiance with the old life or with the old mind or with the old thinking our thinking has been transformed something has happened and the truth of the word of god continually renewing us because we are asked to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Each time truth is brought across, truth is preached or truth is given, those truth becomes like a light bulb that lightens our minds, that lightens our whole being. This is very true. And um, the same scripture in another translation, it says, so, I am not the one living now. It is Christ living in me. I still live in my body, but I live by the faith in the Son of God. He is the one who loved me and gave himself to save me. Isn't that amazing? Now, these are something that we consciously, this is not an imagination. This is not something we just try to do as a religious exercise. This becomes our daily experience. And when it becomes that, I tell you what, you will be amazed how the enemy cannot rob, cannot try to sabotage what God is doing in our lives. The same word, in another translation because this english word until you break it down until you know it becomes more meaningful look at uh, the, the passion translation it says 
my old identity has been crucified with Messiah and no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispensed his life into mine. Isn't that amazing? Is it? Now, this is making scripture practical. It is, and it's personalizing it. It's no more a theory. A lot of people think that the Christian life is theory, you know, it, it's, it's only descriptive. We can always describe the ideal, ideal life, but it is never for us to live. No, it is for us right now. But there are some things that is blocking it. There are some things that is hindering this life from flowing. And um, that is it. Let us look at do so, uh, what I call a uh, memory assistance. Now, I want you to remember all those exams you had in school during your school days. I hope, I'm sure you look back right now and you remember those exams. Well, did anybody ever tell you that they weren't testing your ability, but merely how well you under stood your memory. Every exam was not meant to measure your ability, your strength, your figure, your stature. Every exam is meant to test how well you understood your memories. Now, testing never tests the ability. It merely tests a candidate's ability to recall under pressure. Isn't that amazing? You read a book. And after that book, from that book, they draw some you know, questions. And they say, now I give you 30 minutes or one hour. You're going to answer this. Bang. Don't you know, flick it upside down. And you'll be looking around. You have nothing, nothing around you. And when is the time? It's okay. Turn the book, read the instruction, and start. Bang. What are they doing? They are testing your ability to recall under pressure. So what do you recall when you are under pressure? And it's interesting because all our lives, we have somewhat developed our mind our memories, our thinking, there is so much things we have stuffed it with, okay? Now, memory, it's all about connecting the known to the unknown. Isn't that amazing? And that is so true with our computers. It's amazing that computer that we use today is actually constructed from the brain patterns. So before a computer file can be stored, it must be given a label. How many of you have a sweat and a type up an essay or an assignment? And because you have not linked it to somewhere, you haven't saved it, and you close the computer or something happened, the, the power goes off and you go, oh my, I've lost everything. Everything just gone. And you just go one side and suck and suck and suck because you know you're gonna start all over, all over again. So before a computer file can be stored, it must be given a label. Now, no, no label 
is always resulting in data loss. We lose everything. Okay. Our memories are capable for all things. They're the best computer in the universe. Yeah. And you can never underestimate what your memory, what your mind they can carry and what your mind can do. And with that, a lot of us still think some kind of external thing is manipulating us. No. Trace our problems back to the source. Now, I put here, there are three kinds of memory. Number one, there are short-term memories. Now, it lasts just a few hours, if not recalled during that time. You can hear something, and if, it's not, if you don't recall, you lose it. It's like, if you don't save what you've just typed in your computer, it's going to go and you will start all over again. We have short term memories, but also we do have medium term memories, which recalls or reverse. Uh, and you have to do it within 24 hours. And when you recall something and reverse it, it actually be, begin to be part of you. And Ruben will say, if you, if you practice, if you repeat something over and over again for 24 hours, you become a master for that thing. And that is really, really interesting. Now, the third uh, kind of memory is the long-term memory. Now, with the long-term memory, we revise it after a few days and periodically. And after that, you are going to have it forever. You are going to have it forever. This is how memory and the mind works. But remember that this teaching is on how to live out of the mind of Christ. It is very, very important. And when we become, when we accept, and when Jesus takes over our life, something happened. He didn't just uh, paint us over. Redemption does not mean a makeover, you know, a renovation, home renos. That's not what it is. What Jesus did for you and I actually he replaced us. He, he, his life, according to the scripture we read earlier in Galatians 2.20, he said, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And if Christ is living in me, I am living out of his mind. The mind of Christ is what I possess. And that mind is not defeated. That mind is not weak. That mind is not self-defeating. If there is any self-defeating in our lives, that's an evidence that maybe we are not living out of the mind of Christ. Because the mind of Christ is empowering. The mind of Christ is assuring. The mind of Christ always always brings us to these awesome resources, our inheritance, who we are, what we have, what we can do, where we can go. There is no limit. Paul will cry out and say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That's not just a positive confession. That is truth confession. That is truth statement, because he can do all things through Jesus. So, four methods of memory yes. to memorize things 
It could be through audio. So I have to hear it. I have to rhyme it or repeat it. This is how to memorize things. Number two, you have to visualize it. Or I have to see it, symbolize it, draw it, visualize, picture it, or even put it in diagram. A lot of people learn differently. And this is amazing because one of the, uh, not long ago, we did a whole series on uh, pro uh, prophetic uh, prophecy and uh, our, our prophetic visions, uh, pictures, prophetic pictures. And uh, it's, it's amazing how people key in because it's possible. The mind we have is the mind of Jesus and the Holy Spirit lives in us, with us 24 seven. This new life is not like switch that you turn off and on. It is a constant light. Sometimes we may not even feel, feel it, but that we don't feel it doesn't mean that he's not there. He is there and he is with us all the time. Next one is kinesthetic. That is, I have to do it or act it out or teach or explain it to someone else. And that is, ways to actually learn and grab hold of, of something. And the fourth one is comprehension. In other words, if I understand the meaning, I can reward or react, uh, sorry, re reason it whenever necessary. There was one 14 year old girl, she was so sick and um, the doctors actually gave, gave up hope because they could not find a cure. And she was at that point of dying and they asked the mother to take her home, at least to spend the last days with, uh, with her. They got home, she was in a room and the mother gave her a Bible and um, she was reading the Bible, and uh, for some time the, there was so you know everywhere was so quiet that the mother, after a while, she really become a bit uh, 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 unsettled because wondering what must have happened to her. And she went into the room to see her. She was surprised that she was reading the Bible, and she said to her, "Honey, what are you doing?" He said, ma'am, I've just been watching Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Did you get that? She didn't say, I'm reading the Bible. She was reading John chapter 11. You know, the story of Lazarus dying and Jesus going over to her. She drummed to her. It wasn't just a reading she was reading. She actually got into the, the whole thing as a, as a movie, as a drama. Her re response to the mom was, mom, I've just been watching Jesus raise Lazarus from the grave. And the mother said, wow, that's interesting. And when she said that, you know what happened? She stood up from the bed, totally healed, mm -hmm. completely healed. Isn't that amazing? Now, the Bible is not just a reading Bible. The Bible is a love letter from our loving father. You know, it is a way you, the, the, the word be, come alive to us. The word of God do come alive. I had exact experience when I was sick of malaria back in, in, in my country, Nigeria. And I was lying for days. And then I was reading my Bible. I was reading uh, Peter, the epistle of Peter. And I come across where he was talking about Jesus, you know, uh, how he, he, he did not, uh, 
talk about Jesus that by whose stripes we have been healed. And when I read that scripture, wow, I jump off the bed. I said, if because we have been healed was in the past tense. It didn't say we will be healed or we may be healed. I jumped up and you know what? I was totally healed. The word of God come alive to us. Amen. The living from the mind of Christ means that the, the word of God is truth and the word of God stays with us. Now, if any of this does not you know, fail to help, Sometimes we use what we call the memory hook to lock in what you hear, what you receive, what has been spoken over you. Memory hook works like, you know, uh, one comes to my mind straight away is uh, the daylight savings. You know, a lot of people struggle to remember each time when the daylight saving comes, is it? Are we taking the, the clock forward or are we taking it backwards? A lot of people struggle. But one of the ways to make a memory uh, hook for that is the start of the, uh, the daylight saving means falling forward and falling backwards. If you connect it with you know uh, going forward or falling forward and falling backwards, that is it. If you can remember that, at the start of the daylight saving, you won't be asking, am, am I pushing my clock backwards? Or am I pushing it forward? You know, those will not be issue anymore. Hallelujah. Okay. Learning to carry a light mind. Now, this is one of the beauty of living from the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ guarantee that we are carrying a light mind. There is, there is no load on our mind. Life and uh, experiences and learnings have so much stuff this, the ordinary mind, the mind I had before Christ. There is so much experiences. There is so much issues that, you know, that stuff it. And every now and then, these things come to compete. But there are strategies and ways to carry a light mind, especially you not congesting the mind of Christ that you now have. Okay? You can't congest it with any other thing. If you try to put so much into, <laughs> into it, it's not going to stick. Because the mind of Christ is is pure okay remember to him that is pure everything is pure yeah. now how do we carry light minds number one very practical all appointments and deadlines in a diary or upon work calendars this is to relieve your mind of the mundane as well as prevent family confusion. People that allow everything to be crowded in their mind, they are frustrated, they are stressed, they go about, you know, really angry. But when we organize our lives, Things like this, write it somewhere. You have no idea how many times I forgot my wedding anniversary. To the point that on the day, everybody will be out and doing stuff. I'm the only one because I didn't, I forgot. And my wife will, is, will not be happy. You, know, you, you don't expect her to, because I've done it not once, not twice, not thrice. And they, then I had to come to a point I said, hi. Something has to be done. You know, I have to carry light mind. I won't allow other things to, to occupy my mind so much that I forget the important things in my life. Next thing is, look at this. Fear nobody. 
Start facing up to your fears and resolve them. In other words, every time fear comes, and there are people that live what we call fear-dominated life, it should not be. Fear will zap you. Fear will, will drain your energy. Fear will is a thief that takes everything away. But one of the questions you begin to develop or things you will ask yourself is, what's the worst that can happen over that fear? You know, what's, what is the worst thing that can happen over this issue that I'm afraid of? If you are fearful and the, you look at the word of God, how many times did the, the Lord say to people, fear not? Fear not, fear not, don't fear, don't. And if you say fear not, it, it is because we, we can fear not. If we cannot fear not, he will not tell us to fear not, okay? So next one, stop tolerating those nagging and stinging thoughts. Do whatever you have to do to resolve them now, don't let it go the next day. Focus on the positive approach, not the negative. There are things that still nag you, there are thoughts. Every time, stop them. Do something, you stop tolerating them. Bring them out in the open and face those thoughts. And ask them, you know, ask yourself. Because the mind of Christ will never torture you. The mind of Christ will never torment you. If there are things that are causing pain in your heart, these are not coming from the mind of Christ. We have to do away with them. Another way of carrying a light mind is declare war on procrastination. And procrastinations are born out of fear of failure. People that keep postponing things, sometimes it's because they are afraid. What if I fail? What if? What if I can't? You know, declare war to any and every procrastination. This doesn't flow from the mind of Christ. Not at all. Cultivate the do it now habit, grab the reins of your life by getting the steps to your goals absolutely clear. Know where you are going. Know who you are. Know what you have been called to do. Know what is the will of God for your life. Some people are still, you know, walking on a tight rope, trying to find the will of God. Hey, you are already in his will. He said to he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The father is well pleased with you. And if he's well pleased with you, you're already there. And then we begin to discover what it is. We progress in life. But until you declare war to the kind things like procrastination, Things that are fear-based, the fear of failure, we cannot make progress. And the last one, this is become aware of your expectations. Learn to check them regularly. They must serve you and not drive you or cause you to fail yourself. What are your expectations? Because if your expectation is not real, where is it coming from? Every expectation must be based on reality. Become aware of them. Your expectation to your, on your husband, on your wife, on your children, those expectations, are they real? If it's not real, check 
regularly. Everything in our lives must serve us. If there are certain things in you that are driving, if you are living a driven life, hey, God cannot drive you. <laughs> he leads. Sam says, he leads me. If you feel like you're driven in life, hey, stop. Maybe you need to meet me. You need to come attend the tool, Life Toolbox uh, 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 workshop to learn skills how to go through life successfully. Hallelujah. Amen. So Christ is in us. Finally, be much, much more gentle with yourself. Some of us are too hard on ourselves. The mind of Christ is a loving, caring, perfect, powerful, everything you can think. That mind doesn't sabotage us. Mm -hmm. That mind helps us. That mind made us appreciate who we are. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. You know, you are one of your kind. There are no two of you in this life. Many a time, those uh, uh, twisted thinking try to sabotage our lives. So it's time you be gentle with yourself. In a short, sorry, in a very short time, you probably won't even be able to remember the things that are stressing you today. Some of the things that causes you sleeplessness, you probably may not remember them anymore. Remember the root of all stress is fear. And fear evokes as well as drain emotional energy. Wow, fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amazing. One of the things God, you know, uh, put a disclaimer on. You know how people write a disclaimer? God put a disclaimer when it comes to fear. And Paul said that to Timothy. God has not given you the spirit of fear. But love and of, what's the next one? Sound mind. Okay, we have something beautiful and better for our lives. So remember that the root of all stress is fear and fear invokes and drains emotional energy. Faith in the providential care of our heavenly father and his power to convert any situation to a positive learning experience. Isn't that amazing? In the part two of this, we'll be able to uh, explain a bit more scripturally how this mind of Christ is, that's who every, where every believer lives from. And you understand the difference so that you will not allow the mind of Christ that you carry to be crowded or be defeated by anything that is clamoring around you. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. So, God allowed some things to become positive learning experience in our lives. And that, that is the only antidote to fear. So there is really no room for fear. We don't have to. Ruben wrote a powerful song oh, at the long, long ago. Those songs knew that the, we will live in this time oh, of our lives. Fear is broken. Uh, uh, fear is broken. What's the other one? Something is a fade away. Eh? Doubt has faded Doubt. away. Doubt. Thank you. Thank you. Eh? Fear is broken. Doubt has faded away. There is healing in the presence of the Lord. And that is very true. So I want to thank you. And um, remember the scripture. We have the mind of Christ. That is what we have. And let that be your confession. Let that be your possession. I have. You know, Father, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. And as you grow on that, 
you know, as you really build yourself on that, every other thing begins to fade. You know, we human beings, we are body, we are soul, and we are spirit. And this is really important. The human, uh, our, our human body is like, a, can be illustrated like a building. In a, a, a building, we have the structure, the building. Inside the building, we have the furnitures and we have everything that we live with. And then we have people, you, inside the house. Okay? So I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in a body. And this is really interesting because even though we are spirit, we be made one with the Lord, we need our mind to correspond and agree so that the spirit will begin to direct the mind on how to live. The mind will never lead you. Those who are living from their emotion or their mind, you know, the reason is because that is the, the area we spend years of our life training and, and educating and, and with life experiences that we go through, everything is in the mind area. And when we, we are alive in the spirit, we are, the, Jesus is in all this, but the mind for some reason is not allowing the life of the spirit to flow. So like in a house, the furnitures and all the things in the house does not control you, you control them. And the building itself gives shelter, gives protection. So my body is like a building that house the furniture, which is my soul, spirit, uh, uh, my mind, my emotion, and my will. And then my spirit is me. So he's the one in charge. And because life flows from the spirit, every other thing submit. Mm. That's why we have to teach our mind. We, we have to renew our mind. Renewing our mind is not a, is not a, a, a session with a, a psychology. No. It is feeding from the spirit, the, the life of the spirit that we are, we carry. So you are, you are conscious of your spirit being, you are conscious of your soul, you are conscious of your body. But they are all, the beauty of them is the one that lives there. It's like without you in your house, the house is useless. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring transformation. Mm. That each and every one of us, we know Amen. that we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And I will live. I'm living from that mind. And it's not congested. It's not combined with so many things. In fact, from there, I control everything in and around me. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you.